Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my frosty garden. The temperatures are really dropping here. Last night it got down to 26 degrees. We're going to be in the teens tomorrow night and the following night. We also are going to get three to five inches of snow tomorrow <laughs> and by Sunday night it's going to be 10 degrees. What a crazy change. This is very early for us. So I've been kind of freaking out. I've been worried about the leeks because they're so exposed being so much above ground. So we're going to harvest those today. Look at my poor tomato plants. They look pretty sad, don't they? And then we're also going to dig up the potatoes and we can make leek and potato soup. So that'll be nice. But I wanted to show you the process of that. And I'm going to do this video over a few days, maybe show you the snow tomorrow and then also we're hoping to dig up the carrots, rutabagas, and the parsnips after the storm has gone by. So there's a lot going on here. To dig up the leeks, I'm going to use this little spading fork here and carefully loosen the soil around the base of them. Look how big they are. So this is Bulgarian Giant. I got the seeds at Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. That is a big leak. Now the routine will be for me to clean them up a bit. I'm going to use my pruners and just shorten them up a bit because I'm going to be storing these in our refrigerator. Look at that beautiful stem. Wow. another whopper. Well here is the leek harvest and I could not be more pleased or impressed. These are amazing. I'm definitely going to grow Bulgarian Giant again next year. I've finished cleaning up the leeks as much as I could in the garden and look at them. I am so impressed. So the next step is for me to bring them inside. I'm going to cut off the root system and I'll wash off the soil that's on any of them. And most of them I'm going to put into plastic bags and put them in the refrigerator to use over the next few weeks. But I'll also take quite a lot of them and I will slice them and put them into freezer bags and store them in the freezer so that we can use them in soups and stews later. You know what's funny is as I was cleaning these up in the garden, I kept thinking, oh, I wish a neighbor would walk by. I could say, hey, do you want some leeks? <laughs> because, you know, I love to share the wealth. Unfortunately, nobody walked by, and I think it's because it's so darn cold outside. Okay. You might recall that we grew all of our potatoes this year in either cloth grow bags or really large containers. And that worked so well because it allowed us to expand the footprint of our garden without having to make more beds. So what we're going to do is empty each bag or container onto the ground next to an area that is going to be the compost pile and we have a lot of shredding to do for that. So this is always my favorite time of year because looking for potatoes is like looking for buried treasure. Oh, this is so much fun. Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh, I just love this. Look at all of these. We are going to be eating well this winter. Wow. Little guys. Now when you're digging up your potatoes, if you accidentally spear one with whatever digging tool you're using, 
make sure that you use that potato first because it will rot in storage and it can spread. The other thing you need to know is that you do not want to hose the soil off of the potatoes before you put them into storage. What I'm going to do is move these into our garage and before we put them into bins, I'm just going to leave them in the garage for 24 hours and let the soil dry naturally and fall off of the potatoes. Then we'll put them into the bins and I'll make sure that I show you how we do that. Well, it's the next morning and it has just started snowing. I have to admit, it always looks so pretty. We'll see how things go today. Well, here we are a few days later, and I still have a garden covered with snow. We ended up getting about eight inches of snow. We broke an all-time record for snow in the month of October, which is nuts. I never like to break any kind of weather records, right? <laughs> but I did want to finish up the video. I was thinking I'd be able to do it today, but I think we're going to wait one more day and I'll show you how we keep our potatoes nice and fresh during the winter months. It is a really easy method and we use the exact same method for carrots and parsnips, which are buried in the snow back there. Also for beets, yep, they're back under the snow there, and for rutabagas. So we'll finish up the video tomorrow. Well, it probably doesn't look like it, but it's actually warmer today. I think we're going to get maybe up to 40 degrees. Woohoo! <laughs> but you can see there's a lot of snow still on the ground. So today I'm finally going to show you how we store our potatoes, carrots, parsnips, rutabagas, and beets. Now before I get started, I want to give full credit for this method to my husband Bill because he thought of it several years ago and it has made all the difference in how well our root crops and potatoes keep through the fall and winter months. In the old days, we used to store potatoes in boxes in our garage and very quickly they would start shriveling up and that's no good. So here's what you need is some type of a plastic bin. This is a Rubbermaid type of a container and it also has a snap-on lid. And then what you can't quite see here is I have a wheelbarrow that's full of straw that I have lightly moistened. That's the secret is to have them be a little bit on the moist side. And then I'm going to start putting the potatoes in, layering them basically. So straw, potatoes, straw, potatoes, and so on. But again, this needs to be moist. Not sopping wet, but lightly moist. I love seeing all of these freshly dug potatoes. You know, we've been storing them in our garage for the time being in a wheelbarrow because the snowstorm hit and then we were stuck. We just couldn't do anything. And again, just to reiterate something from the other day, I never washed these off with water. I wanted to let the soil on each potato dry a little bit. It's really important you don't do that because that can hasten decay and you don't want that. So what I did is I just left them in the wheelbarrow, <laughs> let the dirt fall off basically, and then when I'm ready to cook with them, that's when I'll wash them. Okay, so there's a layer. Thank you. 
I've got a lot of really little potatoes in here that are from that variety called Clancy, and that's because it was started from seed. So it was kind of behind schedule by the time we planted it. But we'll just cook them like new potatoes. That's really what they are. <laughs> okay, so that's the last layer. And then I'm just gonna put some straw on the top. Now during the winter months, the straw will dry out a bit. So just every so often, maybe like every three weeks or so, you want to add a little bit more moisture. You don't want a whole lot of water in the bottom of the bin, but I would add a little bit if you feel like this is getting dry. Now, when you're ready to store them, you want to set the lid on top, but don't snap it in place because you want a little bit of air circulation. So that's important. So you can see how easy that method is, and it works so great for carrots, parsnips, rutabagas, and beets as well. We keep our bins in our garage, which is unheated, but it is insulated. It's important to keep them cool during the winter months. Thanks so much for watching everybody and for hanging in there with me while I waited for this crazy wintry weather to stop. And again, it's only October. I'll see you next week. Take care.